How did this man who lived in a 19-room mansion, worked as an accountant in a bank, and was a Sunday school teacher living a seemingly good life, suddenly take the lives of his entire family and disappear for 18 years? This is the story of how detectives finally caught John List after nearly two decades. It was 1971. John was in his late 40s when he found himself under a mountain of debt and lost his accounting job. He was skimming money from his mother's bank accounts to pay for the mortgage while fearing that he could no longer support his family. He went bankrupt but refused to go on welfare and didn't want his family to suffer in poverty. So he decided the only solution was to take the lives of his wife, three kids, and his own mother. In his words, I did it to save their souls. He placed their bodies in sleeping bags, lining them up together in the ballroom. Immediately after, he wrote a five-page confession letter to his pastor. The youngest one struggled a lot. And I'm sure many will say, how could anyone do such a horrible thing? But after it was over, I said some prayers for them all. That was the least I could do. He sent notes to the kids' school saying that the family will be in North Carolina for several weeks to visit their sick grandmother. He closed all bank accounts, taking the rest of his mother's money, and stopped all mail, milk, and newspaper deliveries to the mansion. John lowered the thermostat in the house, played church music from the radio, and left to start a new life. Because John's plan was so methodical and his family was very reclusive in the first place, for over a month, nobody noticed anything. It wasn't until the neighbors saw the lights in the house burn out weeks after and realized it still hadn't been fixed, and they finally grew suspicious. The teachers also realized that the kids haven't returned to class and felt something was off. Police was called and the investigation of John List and his family began. December 7th, 1971. Law enforcement entered the mansion through an unlocked window. Immediately, they felt how cold the place was and saw the bodies in the ballroom. They were all decomposing at this point. There was a trail of dried up blood leading to the bathroom. It looked like John didn't do that well when cleaning up the crime scene and left the mop and bucket inside the shower. The organ music was still playing, and soon after, they found the five-page confession letter to his reverend. Police checked all around the room, and inside one of the drawers was the revolver and handgun he used. John List also meticulously cut out his face in every family photo. They found his car parked at the Kennedy National Airport, but there was no evidence of him boarding any flight. The detectives had no lead, and John List had disappeared without a trace. 1989. Although it's been nearly two decades, the New Jersey police never gave up on this case. Newspapers with his face continued to appear with the headline, John List still not found after this many years. It was possible he took his own life, but he could have also started a new one far away. Around this time, a show called America's Most Wanted was airing its first season and garnered a huge audience. That's when detectives contacted John Walsh, the creator of the show, in hopes to get this case on television. The plan was to tell the world about John List's crime and get someone to call in with information on his whereabouts. However, the last picture they had of him was from 1970. Nobody knew what he would look like 18 years later. That's when they hired Frank Bender, a master in forensic sculpting, to create a bust of an old John List. Forensic psychologists were also very important in helping Bender imagine List's new look. He carefully analyzed the man's entire history, his upbringing, his fears, and his genetics through pictures of his parents. And after many hours, the physical bust of John List was complete. 
It featured his hawk nose, receding hair, wrinkles, the sagging cheeks, and even the same scar behind his ear. Frank Bender also theorized that John List would still be wearing thick glasses as it reminded him of his younger, wealthy self. To finish off his clay sculpture, Bender put on a pair of dark-rimmed frames different from the ones before he became a fugitive. And on May 29th, 1989, the John List episode aired on America's Most Wanted to over 20 million households. Nine days later, John List was arrested. His neighbor Wanda was watching the episode when she noticed some very striking similarities. An accountant, glasses, man in his 60s with the same facial features as that of the bust, and a churchgoer. She called the show's tip line phone number just in case. Bob Clark, an accountant living in Richmond, Virginia, remarried to a woman named Dolores Miller, whom he met at a church gathering. Robert Peter Clark. Real name, John List. When confronted by detectives, he denied ever knowing such a man. But the evidence was all there. His fingerprints matched the ones on the firearms he used. And magnificently, he wore the exact same thick-rimmed glasses that Frank Bender had put on the bust. His new wife, Dolores, told her story of how they met and after finding out the truth, she divorced him immediately. For months, he kept denying it. But on February 16, 1990, List confessed to his true identity. 18 years ago, he parked his car at the JFK airport, but instead of taking a flight, he took a train to Denver, Colorado to start another life under his new name. With everything finally revealed, he went on trial, and the judge sentenced him to life in prison. In an interview in 2002, they asked List, why didn't you take your own life? His answer, doing that would have barred me from heaven as I wanted to reunite with my family. Some final facts that I found out while researching this story was that the name of the mansion, Breeze Knoll, was burned down nine months after the crime by an unknown group, and destroyed along with the home was a stained glass skylight, said to be a Tiffany original that was worth $100,000 in 1970. In present day, this would be worth about $680,000, and this amount of money would have cleared John List stepped. John Walsh, the host of America's Most Wanted, donated Frank Bender's physical bust to a forensic science exhibit which can now be seen inside the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Tennessee. Hope you all enjoyed this new type of creepy video compared to what I usually post. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.